So right now I'm doing what's called a critical load subpanel. I am taking circuits from this panel and moving them into the panel that's backed up by the inverter. So just to give you a bird's eye view, this breaker here feeds power all the way over into the inverter. Power comes out of the inverter and feeds this panel. Grid power can pass through to this panel when it's up, but if the power goes out, this inverter is going to automatically take over the load and start powering only this panel. The inverter basically has an internal transfer switch. So with all that said, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm, I've got this big white wire coming through. I've got them nippled together with a two inch conduit and that white wire goes all the way through and connects to the neutral, bonds the neutrals. And I've also bonded the grounds together. And from here, all you have to do is move the hots. So I'm just going to take this wire loose and run a piece of wire through. I'm going to snap that breaker in there. And I'm going to wire nut the end of this wire to there. So I'm using THHN wire. There it is. It's at Home Depot. THHN 12 solid. Uh, pretty easy to come by. I think this roll was like close to 100 bucks. These spools are really nice if you have to do it more than once. And uh, from here on out, I'm just going to take this wire out of this breaker. Uh, use these. I find these are a lot easier to use than wire nuts. I'm using Wago connectors. They are not push-ins. They actually clamp onto the wire. So these are Wago 221s, and I find these are quicker, easier than wire nuts, especially when you're doing this many. So the first thing I usually do is pop off the breaker, and I take the wire loose, and I try to keep up with my wires as best I can. I've found the best way to keep up with the wire is to label them as you go. There's where the next one's gonna go. I'll go ahead and snap the breaker on in, but I won't turn it on. I kind of wedge it to hold it. And I move the wire. All right, guys, so I always ask my DIY customers how much they know about electricity, and a lot of time I get the answer, I know enough to be dangerous. Well, this is a perfect place to be real dangerous, so make sure you cut both the electrical panels off before you start working in them. You don't want to have either one of them energized, and because they could be energized from the battery system if you'd already installed it, or they could be energized from the grid, you want to make sure you remove power from all sides of that uh, electrical system you're going to be working in. But uh, other than that, this is a really great uh, portion of the project for the DIYer to do because it allows you to become familiar with the location of your circuits within your system. You know now what all your critical load circuits are. Most people don't know what they have in their critical load panel. They don't understand the breaker panel. It's a mystery to them. That's one of the first things I think any homeowner that wants to know about electrical should start getting into. Even though it's uh, intimidating and it's you know so dangerous, that it's also really simple and straightforward if you just educate yourself on these things. And it's something that the solar companies really don't like to do because when they have to choose what circuits to move into the critical load panel, it kind of opens them up to liability and they don't really know what kind of behavior is going to go on in the house after they're gone. And, you know, some circuits, you know, got a coffee maker and a bread maker and a dishwasher and everything plugged all into them all at once. And, you know, they start tripping. Well, if you are the one that wired your critical load panel, you know that and you can go move that circuit back out. Or maybe you realize three or four months down the road that the outlet on your porch isn't on the critical load panel. Well, now you can go and pop the covers and move it. Uh, this is a straightforward and it's a easy process. And the fact that it's repeatable and all the parts are on the shelf at Home Depot, your big box, and you know regular electricians are going to understand this part. This is a part that a DIYer can manage most of the time. And that, my friends, is how you move circuits into critical load panels. A couple things to note is you want to get the same brand panel as you have as your main. You want to make sure that that other panel that you buy to be the critical loads panel is the same brand. The easiest way to do that is to look at the breaker type or look at the inside of the cover of the panel. That sticker is usually going to tell you the brand. 
This one is a square D home line panel. That way the, all the breakers fit. You just have to buy spaces, blank space fillers to fill all those, which I have. And this is how you do a critical load sub panel. There's a shot of how I have them connected. What I did is I made a hole for this panel first. Then I bored through, found out where it was, made a hole in that one, and then I used a piece of pipe to connect the two.